more uh, of my colleagues on that. Um, do you want to first just go around the table for you and tell me your name and uh, you know what what uh, where at Yale and what what uh, your interest is in particular? Yeah. Yeah. I'm Abigail Kearney. I'm a senior in Yale College. It's an undergraduate portion of this course. Um, I've done a lot of different work on climate change mitigation, but I'm hoping to work as a journalist next year. Great. Uh, my name is Lucian Go. I'm a first year uh, environmental management student at the Forestry School. I'm interested in um, climate and energy policy. And uh, before I came here, I was actually working in NRDC San Francisco office in the energy program. Oh, great. Okay. I'm Matt. I'm a sophomore in the uh, in the college in the undergraduate um, section. Uh, still figuring out where I'm headed, but I uh, enjoyed uh, sitting in on your presentation last semester. I'm excited about yeah, moving forward with, with the work, if possible. Yeah. Great. Hi, my name is Maggie Thomas. I'm a Master's of Environmental Management candidate um, in my second year, so final semester here. Um, I've been studying environmental policy, kind of more specifically as it relates to public lands, but was interested in this course because I hope to go into politics, and I think sort of framing and communications issues are pretty critical um, for environment. Great. Okay, good. So let me, um, whoops, can you, sorry, let me, s there we go. Um, Okay, uh, you're not going to learn technology from me, that's for sure. Uh, so let me talk a little bit about the context for this first, a lot of which you guys, or maybe all of which, will already know, um, uh, and then can talk a little bit about the project, and then, again, uh, as I mentioned, we'll probably um, more that we can do by email or otherwise um, to add, hopefully, even later this week, including um, some documents to send you to look at. So. Uh, as everybody probably knows, the the you know EPA in the fall put out its clean power plan. Uh, the uh, it's supposed to go final in now they're saying early summer, so in July or mid, whether that's early or mid anyway around July. Um, under the plan, each state will be given a target on reduce carbon emissions, not clear yet whether, you know, that'll be based on rate or totals. Um, and, uh, and then each state has to produce what's called a state implementation plan, which has to be approved by EPA on how they're going to meet those targets. And these will be the first national, U.S. national standards limiting uh, CO2 and other greenhouse gases from power plants. Um, the, this is also um, the critical test, really, of the politics of climate policy. Um, you know, the administration, frankly, had you know dragged its feet in the first term, except on autos, where they did a lot um, in terms of climate. And this is, you know, sort of the proposal everyone had been waiting for. This is the one that uh, opponents of climate change action will try to attack. If we win on this, then I think climate change politics change. Um, doesn't mean everything becomes easy, but it becomes sort of an ordinary issue. Um, if, if we lose on this, no one's going to want to go near this for a while. So it's, it's, a, it's very critical from both a substantive and political uh, viewpoint. So right now, the effort is to, on the federal level, number one, strengthen uh, make sure EPA puts out the strongest proposal possible. The comment period's over, but um, EPA is deciding among various uh, policy alternatives, you know, between the proposed and the final. That um, won't be part of this, but it's part of the, the context of it. Um, second, Congress will be trying in any number of ways to cripple and then block um, this proposal through hearings, through letters, through, um, and then eventually, presumably based on what the Republican leadership has said, um, through legislation that would prevent EPA from moving forward, or if it happens after EPA puts out a final rule, uh, legislation to repeal that rule. Um, so that's the federal 
situation on the state level where uh, we could use even more help um, is uh, there's uh, several things going on there. There are battles in the states um, where uh, conservative groups, most uh, notably group named ALEC, which people may know, American Legislative Exchange Council, um, is trying to get some state legislatures to pass legislation making it harder for states to produce implementation plans. Um, on the other hand, we're trying to get as many states, governors basically, to say publicly you know, that they want to move forward um, as early as possible because basically this is gonna be taken as one test of the political strength of this plan, whether states are in it or not. And um, reporters and sometimes others make an analogy to the um, healthcare debate, which is somewhat inexact, and we try to squelch it when it appears in the press, because um, this sort of state implementation process has been in the Clean Air Act for years. It's not some newfangled Obama thing, but um, but the conservatives want to get states to say, we're opting out, sort of like they did on health care, and basically cripple the plan that way. On the other hand, we're trying to get states to affirmatively talk about how positive this would be. There are utility companies on both sides of this. Um, obviously, the, the coal industry is more negative, and then the conservative ideologues are, are more negative. Um, and then the last thing is we're also trying to set up the states so that they will put in, once the rule does go final, that they will put in uh, good state implementation plans, strong ones, so that they the plans actually really rely as much as possible on efficiency and renewals, uh, renewables as opposed to other means like switching from coal to gas. So that's that's the um, the overall situation. and. Really, the goal here is simply to help us do that. At both the federal and state level, we've got these ongoing campaigns there, you know, both inside and outside. In other words, both, you know, talking privately to government officials and trying to um, get the public uh, involved in this. Um, you know, each state is a little different. We've got a set of target states, which you'll see in the, the plan that I'll send you, but uh, the Midwest. Midwest is one, Pennsylvania, um, a few others, some, sometimes based on, usually based on those states being uh, swing states that where they're, uh, they're speaking up publicly on it, publicly on it would be critical. Um, some because they also have senators who are uh, swing votes in these issues um, when this comes up in Congress. Um, so last thing I'll say, the one good thing is congressional action, the president will clearly veto, um, and there's not really much doubt that a veto would be sustained, but still winning Congress would send an important signal, even though um, we're not really in danger of a total loss of Congress. So that's, that's the overall look. Again, I will be sending you guys the plan we've got and also working with my colleagues to figure out exactly um, how to bring you into this and also getting more information from Paul and maybe from you on exactly, you know, how the project is set up. So what, you know, what kind of um, interaction is best for you, but that, that's um, an intro. So questions? Questions or letting me know other things you'll need uh, for me to, that I might not have yet on uh, make, you know, enabling your participation. Yeah, Maggie. I have a question. Um, maybe I missed this in your presentation, but you were saying that this is actually unlike the Obamacare in that states can't opt out? Well, yeah, so there's two ways in which it's different. So one is just a political thing, which is much of the Clean Air Act works this way. So uh, smog regulations, um, the EPA sets a national standard and then states submit these SIPs, state implementation plans. There's a whole set of pollutants where that's common and has happened for decades. So one way in which the um, 
the analogy is inexact as it makes it sound like this is some new thing that's somehow based on the health plan uh, method when it's not. Um, it, here, states can't opt out exactly. What happens is if a state does not, if a state either refuses to submit an implementation plan or if they submit one that EPA deems uh, unacceptable because it won't, you know, meet the the goals, the requirements. Then the federal government writes a plan and for the state and imposes that called a federal implementation plan or FIP. Um, one thing that we think EPA will do is that they will put out. Um, you know, what the model for a FIP would be at the point when they go final on the rule, that's not um, definite yet. And I can't remember how much of this is or isn't public. So, um, but uh, that's what happens. So one of the arguments to get states involved is it's not like then, you know, the federal government will offer something to your constituents like health. Um, it's the federal government will come in and tell the industries and citizens of your state what to do if you don't decide for yourselves. And so um, it's one reason that uh, even some of the industries who are against, that are against the EPA action, do not like this conservative effort to actually keep states from uh, uh, submitting SIPs because they're likely to end up in a place where they have less control over what the nature of the plan is. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you very much. Sure. Other questions? I was wondering, just sort of with the audience of what the sort of strategy proposals would be, would that be, you know, focusing mostly with you to have those eventually end up on the desks, you know, ideally headed towards the desks of people in Congress, you know, you mentioned also sort of public as well, maybe still all in the works, but sort of what sort of key players we really would be, um, you know, working to... Yeah, so I think there's a few things. One is, I mean, we need sort of a public-facing campaign on this, so how to communicate with the public, especially about... Um, the, you know, needing their states to take action. So that's one thing. So the communications part of it, we've got um, some polling, including some that we're releasing tomorrow in some state, on some states, Virginia in particular tomorrow, um, to help do this. But to, so how can we get public pressure on the governor uh, to be positive on the state legislature to either be positive or not to be negative, as the case may be? Um, that's one set of things. Materials actually uh for the gov you know on a in terms of substantive materials um backgrounders for the for the officials and for the media especially where this is all in some ways a new complicated issue other than you know the is climate change real stuff right um uh what kind of materials would be useful there um same kind of thing on the on the federal level, uh, are there for particular senators, are there public facing pressure campaigns, social media, earned media, um, ads um, in traditional media that, uh, line, you know, uh, uh, talking points that we want to use uh, publicly, as well as are there particular things in fashioning uh, more substantive private materials for them? So that that's the kind of thing we're doing. Again, we've gotten a fair amount of poll. We have a fair amount of polling. There's also um, the environmental community is working together on a lot of this um, through something called the Climate Action Campaign. So some of this um, are sort of the NRDC pieces of that larger campaign, and some of them are things that we just feel like we have to do um, as one of the major actors in this, right? The EPA plan is somewhat based on an NRDC proposal. Um, we've even been investigated for, you know, along with EPA that we're too cozy. Um, so NRDC in particular has a big, um, has a lot riding on this, both substantively and in terms of the overall success. Does that answer the question? Yeah, no, that, that helps. Thank you. I guess I should say, I realized I had you guys introduce yourselves, but I didn't say anything about me. So I just, uh, uh, 
So I'm David Goldston. I'm the director of government affairs. Presumably that was given, that information was provided. Um, so I'm in a role of trying to coordinate a lot of the different policy things going on. Uh, at NRDC, I worked on the Hill for 20 years and then did some teaching and wrote a column for Nature for a few years before uh, coming to NRDC. As I said, I think if this goes as planned, there'll be a, a team that you're working with, or at least different people at different times, including some folks from our communications and campaign staffs, as well as our climate policy staff. Does anybody have any other questions? Okay. So David, the process then, and I'm over here, I'm out of, I'm out of view, but the process then is that students that elect to work with NRDC will be getting together with you, maybe either via Skype or some other format, and uh, you guys will be discussing potential projects uh, and then deciding on one that will be pitched to Paul. Okay. Thursday, um, and and he'll sort of make the determination what's best for student learning is also, you know, in, in addition to what's best for you guys um, and moving forward there. That sounds great. And again, I'll try to get some materials out maybe even later today. Um, obviously, they have to be kept extremely confidential. Um, and yeah, look forward, look forward to doing this. And hopefully I'll make it up there sometime during the semester as I did last semester. Great. Well, thanks so much for your time, David. Thanks. Take care.